Phobia, an extreme or irrational fear of or aversion to something. Now that we got that definition out the way, today we will talk about some of the strangest phobias that actually afflict people. And disclaimer, I won't know how to say like 99% of these. The only ones I can say with confidence are these two. And I'm gonna let you guess which one I'm afflicted with. A Ablutophobia, the fear of bathing. Though uncommon in adults, many toddlers experience fears of bathing for a few weeks or months as part of their development. But if it does afflict adults, it is believed to be related to early water-related trauma and can cause social problems due to hygiene issues. I think one of my friends has this. Isotrophobia. The fear of mirrors. This one may stem from superstitious ideas about mirrors, like you can't see a vampire in a mirror or something like that, self-image issues, I bet Bradley Martin can relate to that one, or scenes from horror movies, like when something appears behind you. Now, I'm gonna be honest, mirrors are the most terrifying thing when it's late at night and you can't figure out whether your coat or jacket is clothing or a ghost, so you just stand there petrified and half-naked standing in the mirror like a narcissist. Chatophobia which is the fear of hair. People with this phobia often fear other people's hair and sometimes even animal hair. They may avoid people with thick, curly locks or simply loose stray hair. Some may believe hair is dirty and that contact with it may make them sick. Others develop this phobia after struggling with scalp issues or hair loss. And I think I know a person afflicted with this phobia too. Lenonophobia, the fear of strings. Sadly, it is widely believed to be a result from having been tied up against one's will. People may experience extreme fear of yarn, rope, shoelaces, and other materials resembling string. I'm sorry, but it is extremely difficult not to imagine some scenarios with people afflicted with these phobias. Like, let me play one out for you real quick. Honey, go tie your shoes. We gotta get ready for school. Okay, ma. <laughs> <laughs> which is the fear of long words oh i hope the person who named this phobia is happy with themselves also known as okay like that's any better this fear may be better accounted for by social phobia because it often involves fear of embarrassing oneself while pronouncing long words I think I unlock this fear whenever I need to read for my class because I know if I mess up one word, all my friends from all corners of the class, because we got separated, will start flaming me. Omphalophobia. Which is the fear of belly buttons. Okay. As you can guess, people with this fear often avoid the beach, swimming pools, or other places where exposure is likely. In severe cases, they may cover up their own belly buttons with tape or bandages. <laughs> Imagine this... A guy gets in bed with a girl for the first time and he sets the mood taije and he gets all romantic taije and then he tries to take off her shirt and he sees the belly button and it just goes ballistic. Lechanophobia. The fear of vegetables. You know, I like how the site that I use put it. <clears throat> No, this doesn't describe your five-year-old who pushes broccoli around on their plate until you offer dessert, end quote. But people with this phobia act like how people in Harry Potter talk about Voldemort. Because if you even mention it, or they even imagine it, they can get extremely anxious. Tripophobia, which is the fear of closely packed holes. That's oddly specific. Think honeycombs, seed pods, or surname toads. Whoever named this is better than the guy who named the phobia for long words because I feel like if he did, then this is what it would look like. Now, some researchers suggest that this may be less about fear of holes and more about an unconscious association between harmless objects with dangerous animals because they can share certain features. Globophobia. The It movie must have really messed some people up because it is the fear of balloons. This phobia often develops from past experiences with pop balloons or traumatic events involving loud popping noises. Dude, a cop with this phobia would be able to get away with so many things. So, uh, why did you, uh, why did you fire? They had dangerous and deadly weapons. Um, you lit up a children's fair for orphans. And finally, the last one on our list is nomophobia, the fear of being without a phone. I swear, if we let anyone over the age of like 40 find out this is a real thing, I don't think we'll ever hear the end of it. Though we probably don't experience intense and persistent anxiety about the mere idea of being without a phone, having a dead battery, or having no cell service, one afflicted with this phobia can experience such things. And again, the website that I used came in clutch with the pre-game writing. <clears throat> 
the name is another example of someone being funny. If you don't catch the joke, here's a hint: Mo is for mobile. End quote. So what it really says is no mobile phobia. I gotta respect their craft, man. They're they're good at naming some of these. I really do hope that you enjoyed my video. And if you have a phobia yourself, comment it down below. I really am interested. Also, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another episode.